Welcome to video two of our writing lesson that's incorporating social media. So we finished stage one at this point, and hopefully the students were having a little fun uh, and being able to get creative and write down all of their ideas following your prompts and instructions. Now we have texts that we can work on and we begin rewriting and working into a longer text, something that's a little more structured. So we're going to elaborate. These will be longer tasks. Stage one, they were doing fake Facebook or Instagram posts or doing the, the fake text messaging. It was very short, brief uh, statements, uh, very informal. Now we want them to write more. At this stage, we're still not going to worry about quality. Uh, instead, we're going to focus on quantity. So we still don't, we don't want to hamper the students by worrying about grammar or punctuation. We're just trying to get the ideas out of their head and onto the page. We want them to have that freedom there. But we are going to start introducing a little more structure. So in these longer tasks, we might have them writing, you know, instead of a text message, they're writing an email, or they might be writing a blog. Again, we're, we're writing more. We want more ideas, more text on the page. So for email, they can be filling in a, a template that you provide them, or you're, you're having them write an actual email that they will email to you. A blog, you have to go to, uh, you know, choose one of the many blog websites where that allow you to create a free account. The students will create an account and write the blog that they can then share with you and the rest of the class. If it's, if we're talking about an email template, if we're going old school, it's a piece of paper that's a uh, structured like an email and they're and they're filling it out. If you're on a, a digital device, they can type out uh, following again following your prompt, following your instructions about what what they're writing about, but it's in the form of an email. It could be a shared Google Doc or something posted into uh, some other cloud service where they're sharing it with you, sharing it with the rest of the class, or actually emailing you. You can give them a more detailed template. This would be an example of uh, an email they're writing, applying for a job. If you're teaching some kind of technical writing, professional writing class, uh, or high school students preparing them for the job market, you can see here, I took a, a sample template from indeed.com. There are other templates available online. You can create your own depending on what you want them, you know, who is their hypothetical recipient. You're writing an email to this person about this topic. But, you know, my name is, they put in their name. I'm currently a student at this school. I'm writing for the position of, of whatever. And so, a lot of this is filling in the blank. You instruct them to write three or four sentences or five sentences. You know, you can tell them, I, I want you to ask the person two or three questions, you know, whatever specific instructions you have for that lesson. But the student has a, a starting place, right? And so they have a template already set out. They're not just staring at a blank page and they can be using the ideas from the pre-writing stage. So you're telling them to now take what you wrote as a text message or a, a social media post and transfer it into this email format. If you're having them write a paragraph or multiple paragraphs, you, you can have them go to a website like Blogger or Wix. They create an account, they can add pictures uh, with their blog, and then 
you know, you have access to the blog and their classmates have access to the blog. I've used this uh, several times with my students at the university. Uh, again, it's still more informal than just saying, I want you to write an essay. They are, you know, it's longer and more detailed than writing out that email or that text message, uh, but you're still keeping it a little fun, a little informal for them. Blogs like social media posts, you know, they can have pictures. So again, it'll, it allows them to, to imitate something they might do uh, in, the, in their daily life already, where they're texting or posting pictures to their friends. Uh, it, it livens it up a little bit. More is more, right? At this stage, you want them to add more detail. So I usually supply my students with a list of questions, you know, who, what, when, where, why, that they must address in their writing, or I'll tell them to give us X number of examples or two different reasons to explain, right? You don't want to tell them, you don't want to give them a word count or a page count because then they'll be working toward that, that length and you might get a lot of fluff. You want meat in your hamburger, right? So you give them instructions where you say, I want you to give me list three reasons for your opinion or list three causes uh, of this problem or give me five examples, okay? Uh, you, if you've taught transitions, you can give them a specific number of transition, transitional words or phrases they must use, but you're telling them how many details of whatever sort that you want, right? And then I generally find if they're trying to meet those requirements, your the length of your writing gets longer and more detailed, and then you don't have to necessarily worry about telling them, I need uh, 500 words or 800 words or two pages. I might still tell them how many paragraphs if I want them to have an introduction or if I say I want you know, one paragraph will be talking about one reason and the second paragraph talking about a second reason, you might give them, uh, especially if they're writing an email or a blog, how many paragraphs you want. But word count or page count is not as important as the number of details and what kinds of details that you want them to put in there. So now they've produced an email or they've produced a blog post and you've got this longer piece of writing from our initial stage, more examples, more details, a longer text. So now we're ready to move into refinement stage where we wanna get into the nitty gritty and we're gonna start thinking about grammar and spelling and punctuation and all of that fun stuff. That will be in stage three, video three.